Hey everybody, in this exciting episode, we are building this simple CNC bit holder using the CNC. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So with many projects, I like to start out by using SketchUp to scratch out the design that I'm wanting. Right now the space on my CNC is quite small so this little piece is going to be 8 inches by 8 inches. And I'll round off the edges and have a cubby hole for my wrenches. Typically you only use the same 3 bits over and over again so I didn't need multiple holes for each bit. So I went with 15 quarter inch holes and 10 1 8 holes. That gives me lots of room and extra room just in case for the future. Now I'm not sure the best way to divide the holes equally but I use the divide tool and then just mark out my circles and put the circles out separately and attach it to the nodes. I'm sure there is a way faster way of doing this, but I'm kind of used to this way. So if you have any other ways, please leave a comment below and let me know. With all the holes marked out, now I'm just deleting the lines and cleaning it up so I could save it as a SVG file and import it into Easel. Now I got this tip from Mortgage and Miter and it was to download Flight of Ideas plugin to save this file as a SVG file so I could upload onto Easel. First things first, I imported the file and then I went to the My App Library and used the Explode tool to expose the file. Then I duplicated the file to have one for a quarter inch bit and the other one for the one eighth bit. I highlighted all the quarter inch circles that I wanted converted into drill holes and went to the app library and used that app. And then I changed the catch all tray side to the depth that I wanted. I renamed them to each bit that we needed. And for the 1 8th file, I deleted all the pieces that I didn't need in this file and then converted those circles to drill holes. I also like to center out my X and Y to zero. So I'm able to place this piece anywhere on the piece of material that I have. And before I get the G code, I make sure that I have my feeds and speeds rates good. And in hindsight, I should have changed the depth per pass to the thickness of the material, but you'll see that in a second. And here I'm marking out the piece that I'm getting prepped up. So I can easily set my X, Y, Z to the exact point I want on my stock. So this is kind of how my CNC is set up. The clan system isn't the best because I need the knobs to be lower to use my dust collector better. That'll be another project video in the future. And the clapping system isn't the best, but I always just take scraps and it's worked out great. So here I'm getting the XYZ prepped up and lining it up to the crosshair that I marked earlier. And I try to get it as close as possible just to make sure that I have it in the right area. And when that's prepped up, I get ready to probe Z. I use the probe that comes with the Onefinity CNC. Flip it upside down and probe Z so it knows the exact distance from the piece of material. And when the Z is all ready to rock, it's time to get the file from the USB and put it into the controller. 
There I can access the file and actually upload it onto the CNC so that it knows what it's cutting out. And just like that, we are ready to rock. So you'll see here how I mentioned the depth of pass should have been the thickness of the material. You can see with the speed of the router and how much it's going in and out, it is burning the wood like crazy. I mean, look at that smoke. So what I did is lower down the speed of the router itself and that helped it quite a bit. And in the future, I'll know to correct that. So when that's all done, it's time to switch over to the 1.8 bit, but then you'll have to probe Z all over again. And just like that, it is cutting like butter. I do a little bit of light sanding on this project just to keep it nice and clean. And now for the best part, which is tidying up the space and putting the bit holder there. And just like that, we have a nice bit holder to hold all our bits that we use on a daily basis. This will help keep the space organized and clean. For each project, we use between one to three bits and we interchange them often, so it's nice to have a space to put all our bits in. And even a place to hold our wrenches and trinkets. This is my entry for the Spring Shop Storage Challenge hosted by Mario the Woodfather. Thanks for helping me get my space just a little bit cleaner. And thanks to you all for following along. If you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button. This will help me do the things that I love. And just like that, we will see you in the next one. I also have a few other shop builds like the drill station and the offcut cart. Check them out if you're into shop builds.